Welcome to Seoul. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having you've been, me. You've been here for two weeks, you said? No, I've been here for nine days, eight days. Oh, that's yeah. right. How was the master class? Master class was good. I spoke in Korean, and that was a fear of mine. I came here four years ago from a honeymoon, and that was like the first time I was back in 20-something years. Because mm -hmm. I was born here, and I left when I was four. So yeah, I didn't have a lot of memories of Korea, and I have an idea of what Korea is based on when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. That's not a clear image. But I came back in four years ago, and I was really embarrassed at how little Korean I knew. And I had a moment in the Busan Tower where I was crying because I realized that, that these are my people and what Koreans have built and how much I've been neglecting my culture. From then on, I've been trying to get better at speaking Korean. And then during the master class, I was able to try to do it in Korean. I butchered it a little bit, but people said that it was good. So yeah, I'm gonna take their word for it. Yeah, yeah. all right. I've seen you give lessons on YouTube, mm -hmm. but this is your first time creating an online course with an actual curriculum. Correct? Yeah, correct. So tell us about the course production experience. Oh, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot tougher than I thought because like when I was doing my YouTube stuff, I'll have an idea and I can make a 10 minute video based on that idea. And it's really to just it's easy to just uh, for 10 minutes, but like to do this for five hours where I'm trying to cover everything, it's pretty tough. And this is my first experience, so I didn't know exactly how to structure exactly what I wanted to portray. And there's some stuff while I was talking or after we recorded, I was like, oh, I wish I would elaborate a little bit more on it. But there's always room for the next one, more detailed class, more advanced level stuff. But overall, it was very gratifying, and I'm glad that I'm finally able to provide quality curriculum that's mm -hmm. online. And the whole reason I started this, started even thinking about education, is because when I needed guidance or I was looking for something to help me, mm -hmm. I just couldn't find anything like really useful on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that's changed now. There's so many sources of good information. But I told myself I wanted to be the guy that, like, to provide what I didn't have for somebody. And now, yeah, here we are. My next question kind of ties into that. What made you decide to go with us, with mm -hmm. Class 101, to create your first online course? Mm -hmm. You guys reached out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'll make you say over there. That helped expedite the process because I had a not so pleasant experience beforehand with the educational platform, but I wanted to do better. And I was like looking for opportunities and thinking I want to do it by myself. Oh man, I can't, can't trust nobody with this information. Mm -hmm. I want to do it by myself. I didn't have the time or resource at that moment. And luckily you guys reached out and the timing was perfect. And yeah, I'm glad to have done this with you guys. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad to have you here too. Let's talk a little bit about your course. What's the most important thing about mixing? Most important thing about mixing is that's tough there's so many things <laughs> most important thing about mixing i'll say is creating your own sound and not being bound by the rules everything is just a guideline you should try to do your own thing and create your own sound i feel like experimenting and the first couple of years it's gonna it's really tough because you want your mixes to sound like the stuff you hear on the radio. Like in any field, you can't be good right away. Keeping your head down and practicing and practicing and then somehow developing your own sound. Because it happens naturally. If you're in that environment long enough, the opportunities open up for you to be creative. When you don't have to worry about what your fingers are doing or what volume things should be at, then you can express yourself creatively mm -hmm. through mixing. And I feel, like, of course, in basics, in layman's terms, the most important thing in mixing is getting good levels and, and getting great balances between sounds. But later on, it's like creating your own sound and leaving your mark and having people be like, oh, David mixed this. Yeah. Or, yes. How do you create an efficient mixing environment? I think you ought to be comfortable okay. getting speakers that sound good to you and then not worrying about gear so much because I've always heard it's not the gear it's the ear 
there's a lot of engineers that are like, oh man, if I had the plugin he has, or if I had the compressor he has, or the speakers he has, I might be able to mix that way. But I know plenty of people that have way better equipment than me, but still, still fail to produce good mixes. It comes down to eliminating excuses in your life, yeah. getting to a place where you're comfortable. In that environment, I feel like it's more mental mm -hmm. than physical, because right. you can have all the right. gear, right, right. but if you're not comfortable with yourself, mm -hmm. and if you don't have that environment in your head, then you'll never get a comfortable mixing environment. Mm -hmm. How do you give your mixes personality? Mm -hmm. I think it kind of ties into Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think creating your style. I think from the moment I started mixing to now, I experimented with a lot of things. And for me, it comes down to feel. Like what I listen for in music, what makes a good song to me, I take that and translate it into the mixes I do. So for me, I love like dancing and like feeling energy. So if I'm mixing a hip hop song with the 808s and kick drums and stuff, I'm gonna make those the driving force because those are what make you move. Sometimes you're in the club and like the intro play with no drums and then the 808 hits and everybody goes crazy. There's a reason for that. So like recognizing the things that make you move and make you feel and then trying to make other people feel through your mixes, I think that's very important. And I also like R&B a lot. So if I do get something that's like sad or happy, I have to do my best to translate that emotion through. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes that means not having the 808 too loud yeah. because that makes some stuff too exciting. Yeah. Sometimes that means adding reverb to your vocals mm -hmm. to give you the sensation of sadness. Whatever it may be, analyzing the song that you're working on mm -hmm. and having a clear yeah. goal. And we set goals, but we never get to them exactly how we envision. We're human beings, we're not God. We, we can't control mm -hmm. the future, but just getting to this place that we said we're going to get to in any way possible and then acknowledging yourself and giving yourself credit for the work you've done. Tell us about vocal treatment. Everything starts with a good recording, but I know that's not available to everyone. I've recorded in some noisy rooms with the chaotic eyeball. Have you guys ever seen that? It's like this foam thing that you put over your mic, like this big, it looks like an eyeball. Mm -hmm. so you, Put your mic into it and then it has a pop screen so like wherever you are it'll kill all the noise around it that's a good thing for home studios if you're recording yourself but trying to get the best recording possible if you have ac while you're recording just cut it off while you record if you're in a noisy if you're by the window maybe go towards the wall or put your mic in a room that doesn't have a window little things like that um starting with the source and then once you record it not doing too much is I think key because if you start with a good recording you're not gonna have to do a lot too oh much. okay that's you know what I mean okay. yeah so when you have a good source then you don't have to shine it up too much and I feel like a lot of amateur mixers they like to put in like, as many plugins as they can because they think that's gonna make it sound better mm -hmm. But then you're getting further away from the natural sound. Mm -hmm. So I would say keep it simple. Try starting your vocal chain with just the EQ and then taking out things you don't like and then taking like a, a, a subjective or objective view at it and listen to the song through. Okay, does it need all these things that I normally put? And if it doesn't, then just don't use them. <laughs> okay, yeah. Less is more. Less is more. Yeah, yeah. Especially in music because uh, our ears can only focus on so many things at once. So if you have a song with a million sounds and your vocals have like delay, reverb, and all this stuff going on, there's nowhere to focus. It might sound really cool, but there's no replay value in it because we all know the replay value comes from, from things we remember. Mm -hmm. The first thing that, song that came to my head was like that Jason Derulo song where the melody doo, 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 doo. like it's a corny melody but that makes you move makes and you yeah. know you remember it when that comes on oh that's that song and that's why that song does so well and um, yeah most of the songs on the top 100 billboard are really catchy to help your students become 
mixed engineers who are in constant demand, yourself, what are the professional habits and practices that they must start building? Know your worth, but also understand that you have to grow up. And also, it's not your song. It's the artist's song. So whatever they want to relay or relay with the song sonically, you have to honor that. There's times where I took a song and tried to make it my own, and I send it back. This is not the song we sent you. Can you please go back to what the reference is? And then I'll get butt hurt and damn it. But it sounds so good. But it's, I realize that's not my song. They hired me to enhance the song, not change the song. Mm -hmm. Understanding that and then understanding it's a collaborative effort. It's not, when it comes to you, it's not just you that's responsible for it. Mm -hmm. Whatever notes they have, don't take it too personally. Because mm -hmm. it's not about your mixing. It's about what they wanted mm -hmm. from their song. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I, I, there's m multiple times where I get really sensitive about something they say. Hey, it sounds good, but I don't think this and that. And I'm like, oh, well, I like that part of it. I, you have to check your ego at the door. I think if you're trying to build something with the team, nobody can be bigger than anyone else. Practicing that like really helped me in my career. And people can feel that. And they, even if your mix isn't the cleanest or the greatest sounding, they'll come back to you because they you know exactly. They know that you'll do exactly what you need to do to get the sound in a certain way. That's how you develop trust and relationships with the artists and A&Rs and producers, where they want to keep coming back to you. Yeah, you so know? understanding that it's a collaborative yeah. process. Mm -hmm. When do you feel the most rewarded doing what you do as a messenger? When the artist like, shares the same excitement. So if I send a mix that I think I did a really good job on, and they respond with, oh my God, they're super excited about it. That's the most rewarding to me. Like me personally, I don't care too much about the accolades and like the magnitude of the projects I'm working on. Even if it's a small, like no name artist, seeing the smile on their face or seeing their reaction, mm -hmm. how like I inspire them to be better. I think that's what makes me the most, that's what gives me the greatest feeling of reward. Do you have any upcoming events you'd like it's to funny, share? It's funny that you would ask. October, <laughs> October, yeah. yeah, so in October 2022, we have this event called uh, All Up in the Mix Hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one we did was in 2019. Mm -hmm. Due to unforeseen circumstances, we had to create it on the fly one week before the actual event. And it went well. And we have some guys out here that are still using the techniques and like the sounds that were given in that workshop. To me, it was affirmation that, hey, this was just a vision. And even though we didn't do it exactly the way we wanted to, it still made an impact. So next time we do it, we won't do it. And it's gonna hopefully make even a bigger impact. I was gonna come back in 2020, mm -hmm. it was March. We had everything set yeah. and then the world yeah. shut down. I was really bummed out about that, but I'm glad now because gave us more time to prepare. We've met a lot of people since then that have given me insight on how to do it or are willing to give me a lending hand. So in October, the workshop is gonna be dope. And um, along with the seminar, there's gonna be a workshop slash fest where it gives the kids an opportunity to come and produce a beat and take it home to record and hear what their voice will sound like on a semi-professionally recorded environment for mixers to turn some knobs and make a mix and take that home with them. I just want to create dreams and continue to educate. My last question is, who would you recommend this course to? This course is for people that want to learn how to mix, that aren't professionally mixing yet. Professionals can take the course, it covers a lot of information, but people that want to learn what mixing is, for artists that want to mix their own project, for producers that want to learn how to mix their own beats, um, anyone that wants to enhance the sound of their, their music, and also people that want to learn techniques and file management, how to properly send stems, what bit depth and sample rates to send stuff in, all that stuff is covered in this class. So, Anyone that wants to further their career in music, I would say. All right. Looking forward to the course launch. Thank you. Right. Thank you, guys. Wow. <laughs>